good morning everyone a warm welcome to the power booster talk here in we come up with different knowledgeable sessions from the experts if you are new to the channel don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for today's session we have an eminent speaker dr vilas bhore he is md fcps from grant medical college and jj hospital group mumbai he is an ex secretary of indian medical association jalgaon and director of matruseva hospital jalgaon practicing since 2000 let's understand pcod its symptoms and preventive measure from dr vilas bhore hello friends i am dr vilas bhore a consultant gynecologist from jalgaon maharashtra hope all are you are well protected from the present disastrous pandemic of covid-19 i am here on behalf of extra value card a power booster talk on polycystic ovarian syndrome the topic which is given to me is can pcod be prevented so coming to polycystic ovarian syndrome basically polycystic ovarian disease is now preferably called as polycystic ovarian syndrome because it is not mere simple disease nowadays it is a very complex metabolic endocrine and reproductive disorders and it is characterized by over production of androgens and associated with insulin resistance over production of androgen means androgen is predominantly a hormone of male and which is present in females in very minute quantities but in polycystic ovarian syndrome definitely there is over production of androgens in females and insulin resistance insulin the hormone which is required for control of blood sugar in our body does not work well or normally so what are the symptoms of this polycystic ovarian syndrome patients with this disease or syndrome very commonly present to a gynecologist opd with complaints of menstrual disorders like amenorrhea amenorrhea is absence of menstruation for a prolonged period oligomenorrhea means delayed menses patient gets menses infrequently the menstrual cycle the, the interval between the menstruation is more than 35 days and usually amenorrhea and oligomenorrhea are followed by abnormal excessive menstrual bleeding in most of the patients apart from menstrual disorders in married patients the pcod is responsible for in a infertility inability to conceive then obesity excessive weight gain and hirsutism excessive hair growth male pattern usually pcod patient pcos patient they get excess hair growth male pattern because of increase androgen levels upper lip then beard then abdomen you can see excessive hair growth on this part what is the prevalence of polycystic ovarian syndrome numbers are not very good in india in developed countries we can see 5 to 10% of female population they suffer from polycystic ovarian syndrome and in india as i said it is 3.7 to 22.5% of female population at, at all ages and if we consider the adolescent age group the numbers are still bad 9.13 to 36% and because of this variable prevalence in various countries all over the world 
in india there are a lot of confusions about this prevalence about this increasing prevalence and so indian fertility society monitors the data given by various organizations all over the world to simplify this the simply to simplify the protocols of management so indian fertility society it monitors current management protocols of polycystic ovarian syndrome its apprehensions benefits and risk it also monitors current guidelines by various international medical organizations and it helps to align the mindset of indian clinicians in fertility specialist gynecologist towards a common management protocol now how to diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome we have to diagnose or find out three important things one is androgen excess that is in elevated androgen levels in female patients then chronic an ovulations means these patients of polycystic ovarian syndrome they don't ovulate regulate regularly and that's why they suffer from menstrual disorders menstrual irregularities and third one is polycystic ovaries on ultrasonography the typical morphology of ovaries on ultrasonography which is characteristics of this disease or syndrome now how to diagnose or how to find out androgen excess we can find out androgen excess either clinically or biochemically usually these patients they suffer from obesity they are obese and there is acanthosis nigricans which is associated with obesity what is this acanthosis nigricans acanthosis nigricans is nothing but here you can see the picture there are elevated raised velvety lesions especially in the creases or folds of our body like neck axilla groins sometimes on abdomen also so excessive weight gain more the weight severe the disease and severe the disease more the weight gain so this is a cycle what we face in polycystic ovarian syndrome next androgen excess can be diagnosed by hirsutism that is excess hair growth which is typically a male pattern the picture you here you can see there are excessive hair growth on upper lip a beard and sometimes on abdomen also third clinical criteria to diagnose androgen excess is central or androgenic alopecia alopecia means baldness typically here in picture you can see this is called as a central or androgenic alopecia means hair loss because of excessive androgen levels in females then acne which is very very common complaints in the patients of polycystic ovarian syndrome everybody knows what is acne we what the layman call it as a pimple you can see in this picture but the percentage of lesions is more in polycystic ovarian syndrome biochemically we can diagnose androgen excess by measuring free or total serum testosterone or a ratio of free to total serum testosterone levels usually total serum testosterones are more than 20 nanogram per deciliter and sometimes it may also cross 60 nanogram per deciliter coming to the second part of diagnosis that is di to diagnose chronic an ovulation oligo or an ovulation oligo means infrequent ovulation or an ovulation is absolutely no ovulation causing a prolonged absence of menstruation that is amenorrhea usually 
most of the patients they suffer from oligomenorrhea that is the cycle duration is more than 35 days but sometimes we see frequent menstruation also so cycle uh, interval less than 21 days now this is very important persistent oligo or amenorrhea in adolescent age group after menarche menarche means the first menstruation in a girl it's called as menarche and beyond 2 years of menarche if there is persistent oligo or amenorrhea it is a characteristic early sign of polycystic ovarian syndrome the third part of a uh, diagnosis in polycystic ovarian syndrome is to diagnose polycystic ovaries a typical polycystic ovarian morphology on ultrasonography there are various organizations all over the world they have prescribed various criteria so as defined by european society of human reproduction and endocrinology or american society of reproductive medicine we see here this is a typical picture of polycystic ovaries on ultrasonography so at least one ovary out of two with more than or equal to 12 follicles these are the follicles typically sub capsular follicle means just beneath the capsule of this ovary 12 follicles of size 2 to 9 mm only less than 10 mm and typically sonography when the sonography or ultrasound is done during second to fifth day of menstrual cycle and the second thing which is defined by these organizations is ovarian volume more than 10 mm 10 ml if you take dimensions of this ovary that is a length breadth and anterior posteriorly diameter the ovarian volume more than 10 ml in absence of this is very very specific in absence of cyst there is no cyst in this picture you can see in absence of cyst or a dominant follicle more than 10 mm then only it is a characteristic of polycystic ovarian syndrome and then you can say if you can term it as a polycystic ovary while diagnosing the diagnosing polycystic ovarian syndrome this three things androgen excess chronic anovulation and polycystic ovaries on ultrasound we have to rule out other conditions that mimics or simulates polycystic ovarian syndrome like hypothyroidism hyperprolactinemia and hyperandrogenemia because of some adrenal tumors or congenital adrenal hyperplasia so now how to diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome in adults we have rotterdam criteria to diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome in adults as well as in adolescents girls and out of these three criteria which are suggested by dr uh, by the system meeting two out of the following three criteria is specifically diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome in adults as well as in adolescent girls first is androgen excess what already we have seen in previous slides clinical as well as biochemical that is obesity acne hirsutism and uh, a raised total testosterone in blood then ovulatory dysfunctions that is anovulation or oligo ovulation leading to menstrual irregularities and polycystic ovaries on ultrasonography the typical morphology the necklace pattern we see this is called as a necklace pattern it it looks like a necklace of a uh, necklace uh, so it is called as a necklace pattern additional criteria are also there which are not included in the system of rotor rotor ram criteria these are obesity with or without acanthosis nigricans and some cases are typically associated with mild prolactinemia and subclinical hypothyroidism now so this are uh, amh it is not at all recommended in the diagnosis of 
polycystic ovarian syndrome. Remember this. Now, similarly, in adolescent girls, we use this uh, Rotterdam criteria to following two, uh, sorry, to getting uh, two out of three, which diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome, plus the one which we discussed earlier, the typical clinical early sign of PCOS in adolescent girl, that is persistent oligo or aminoria beyond two years of menarche is a key to diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome in adolescent girls. Now, uh, what are the various blood tests we do in the diagnosis of polycystic ovarian syndrome in adolescent usually? As already discussed, serum total testosterone more than 20 nanogram per deciliter. Uh, Sometimes it may be up to 60 nanogram per deciliter. Then the second test, which is very important, is oral glucose tolerance test. It is, it is also called as OGTT. Uh, in this test, we do a fasting blood sugar, which should not be more than 110 milligram per deciliter. And then we ask the patient to eat 75 gram of glucose powder and after that to us after to us post 75 gram glucose load we taste the blood sugar again and if it is 140 milligram per deciliter or above that means it is a uh, the glucose intolerance is diagnosed and which is a diagnostic test of polycystic ovarian syndrome apart from this which, uh, which is not very commonly done, but it is, a, it is also a diagnostic of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Fasting insulin, if it is fasting insulin levels more than 20 micro units per ml, uh, is suggestive of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Similarly, fasting glucose and insulin, the fasting insulin ratio less than 4.5 is also gives a, a indication of polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now to rule out other conditions, we have to do other in other blood tests also like serum 17 hydroxyprogesterone at 8 a.m. early in the morning to rule out a non-classical non-classical adrenal hyperplasia. This is basically a disease related to adrenal glands, but as uh, it also produces excess androgen, uh, we need to rule out this disease. Diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome. Similarly, hypothyroidism, in which we get elevated TSH level, thyroid stimulating hormone. Serum prolactin, when it is there is a hyperprolactinemia, patient also suffers from oligo or aminoria. And hardly we do serum LH, that is luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, cortisol levels, if indicated. It is not done routinely to diagnose polycystic ovarian syndrome. Now coming to the management part of polycystic ovarian syndrome, PCOS. Now many patients in uh, everybody in all gynecopedies, they very commonly ask question is that is this polycystic ovarian syndrome or a disease is a curable disease? Not at all. It is an inherited disease and it is not a curable disease. You can only control the disease. So now before we start the pharmacological treatment of polycystic ovarian syndrome, every gynecologist or infertility specialist or a clinician usually advise a patient of polycystic ovarian syndrome the non pharmacological pharmacological management that is very important. That is lifestyle management. The patient has to change his lifestyle patient has to decrease his obesity, decrease his weight so that his androgen levels uh, drops and his insulin becomes sensitive. So at least 150 minutes per week or 30 minutes per day of physical activity is recommended for patients of polycystic ovarian syndrome to reduce weight and insulin resistance. In association with lifestyle management and physical activity, diet control is very, very important in the management of polycystic ovarian syndrome. But there is no PCOS specific diet yet recommended 
what we tell to all patients they should eat healthy they should avoid junk foods all pizzas and burgers and everything they should avoid they should eat healthy indian diet conventional indian diet is very healthy and balanced so uh, patient they should uh, they should follow uh, that and healthy balanced calorie restricted low carbohydrate low fat and high protein diet uh, should be taken and usually we don't start metformin everybody knows what is metformin nowadays it is a actually a anti diabetic drug uh, which is more commonly nowadays used in polycystic ovarian syndrome uh, to sensitize insulin it is a basically a, an insulin sensitizer and so it decreases uh, the blood sugar level it uh, improves the carbohydrate metabolism of the body uh, by sensitizing the insulin and usually we don't add this drug from the beginning of the treatment we ask the patient to follow the physical activity and diet control for 6 months and then we add metformin to reduce obesity and insulin resistance now how we assess this where patient is doing all this lifestyle management and diet control and we need to uh, assess uh, the response of her body uh, so we uh, do we, we can measure her waist circumference we can keep a chart of her waist uh, waist circumference so reduction in waist circumference gives a clue that uh, her lifestyle management physical activity and diet control they are this point patient is responding to the, this type of treatment then we can uh, assess her body mass index bmi body mass index is nothing but height uh, sorry uh, weight divided by height square so usually in adults the normal body mass index is about 23 kg per meter square so patient need to achieve this uh, by doing physical activity and diet control and in adolescent we don't follow this value we follow uh, 97.5 percentile of a value of uh, uh, according to the age of the girl what happens with this diet control and physical activity usually these two things very important things of the management of polycystic ovarian syndrome it increases insulin sensitivity so insulin works well it reduces obesity weight is reduced it normalizes androgen levels and in married patient it improves definitely improves the pregnancy rate now the common complaints uh, how to manage menstrual irregularities in patients of polycystic ovarian syndrome here in the in this diagram you can see these patients basically they suffer from an ovulation and because of an ovulation uh, the endometrium the inner layer of the uterus which gets exposed to estrogen for long period leading to excess proliferation of endometrium and usually because of this this oligo and amenorrhea because of this an ovulation usually is followed by abnormal excessive uterine or menstrual bleeding in the patients of polycystic ovarian syndrome how to treat these menstrual irregularities so this is a treatment part of menstrual irregularities we can give cyclic progesterone progesterone is a drug it is a hormone which we give for uh, to control excessive blood menstrual bleeding or excessive abnormal uterine bleeding the very commonly used drugs this is a norethisterone recent drugs are like dynogest levonorgestrel and also natural micronized progesterones are also used now to regularize cycle we can use oral contraceptive pills that is low dose combined oral contraceptives like which contain estrogen less than 50 microgram and progesterone like drosperinone 
बेजोजेस्ट्रेल एंड लिओनोर्गेस्ट्रेल so cyclic progesterone oral contraceptive pills along with insulin sensitizers like metformin and myoinositol now coming to the management of hyperandrogenism that is uh, we have seen clinical hyperandrogenism which causes obesity weight gain then acne hirsutism uh, and menstrual irregularities Uh, so usually management of hyperandrogenism is a long term and multi directional treatment is required uh, hirsutism as uh, the excessive um, hair growth uh, we can treat with combined oral contraceptives with anti androgenic progestins like ciproterone acetate drosperinone or desogestrel along with insulin sensitizers like metformin myoinositol vitamin d chromium and so many other insulin sensitizers these are just supportive treatment uh, supportive drugs and patient required mechanical hair removal temporary by using hair, chemical hair, uh, hair removers and permanent by laser therapy in severe cases of hirsutism we have to prescribe anti androgen drugs like spironolactone or flutamide or finasteride if cocs that is combined oral contraceptives are not well tolerated by the patient but when we start these anti androgens we need to stop these 6 months prior to planned pregnancies in married patients now uh, coming to treatment of acne uh, the same thing combined oral contraceptive pills we can prescribe to reduce uh, these elevated androgen levels and so to reduce acne also and topical applications uh, by consulting a dermatologist then central alopecia that is androgenic alopecia can be treated with same things like combined oral contraceptive pills along with this anti androgens or androgen blockers spironolactone flutamide and finasteride now apart from what we discuss there are other consequences is of this polycystic ovarian syndrome and we need to treat these consequences also so in married patients case of polycystic ovarian syndrome usually they suffer from inability to conceive that is infertility and how we treat this the same thing first we have to advise the patient that lifestyle management physical activity and uh diet control rule out other causes of infertility like tubal factors endometrial factors cervical factors any other endocrine disorders uh male factors we have to rule out and we have to treat accordingly in pcos patient we have to do ovulation induction using various protocols of ovulation induction various drugs various hormones using uh this uh, we can induce ovulation and uh help the patient to get conceived in severe cases of polycystic ovarian syndrome when the patients they don't respond respond to ovulation induction we need to proceed with laparoscopic polycystic ovarian polycystic ovary drilling and of course along with insulin sensitizers like metformin now what happens when a patient of polycystic ovarian syndrome conceives is it a normal pregnancy similar to other pregnancy no definitely not usually these patients they have few high risk these are these patients are have few risk during pregnancy like obesity and its uh, its complications then hypertension that is elevated blood pressure in during pregnancy then elevated blood sugar levels during pregnancy which is called as gestational diabetes mellitus and of course the incidence of miscarriages usually less than 3 months is more common in polycystic ovarian syndrome 
and in delayed consequences or delayed complication we can say usually these polycystic ovarian syndrome patients they definitely suffer from diabetes mellitus usually after 40 years of age and they need to consult a diabetologist for the treatment of the same and in older age or in uh, before menopause they can also suffer from endometrial hyperplasia and sometimes uh, endometrial carcinoma or cancer also uh, this is because of prolonged estrogenic effect on endometrial So friends, coming to the conclusion, a very commonly asked question in uh, all gynecologist OPD is that whether polycystic ovarian syndrome is a curable disease or not. And everybody, uh, and the answer is that polycystic ovarian syndrome is basically an inherited disorder and it is not a curable disease. Lifestyle management is the key to control polycystic ovarian syndrome and its complications. So, as the incidence of this syndrome or the disease or disorder is very, very, uh, we can say more in India, all over the world. And adolescent girls, it is up to 36%. So definitely this lifestyle management from the beginning is very important to control this syndrome. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir, for such a detailed insights on polycystic ovarian syndrome. You aptly said about lifestyle management. That is, prevention is better than cure. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session. Power Booster Talk is coming up with finance theme. If you would like to get all such updates, please do subscribe and hit the bell icon. Have a wonderful day.